So from here, I just want to start painting in my three basic layers, which is going to be my foreground, middle ground, and background. And we start to dissect this thing apart. You, know, you kind of have your foreground area here, your midground area here, and all this stuff back here is going to be our background. So foreground, middle ground, background. Inside of the inside of the midground, that's where I want my most. That's where I want my action to be. That's where you're going to see your characters. That's where you're going to see your major focal point. Okay, the foreground area is just basically there to help situate the viewer inside of the space. Without these foreground elements, the viewer is going to feel very disconnected to what we're doing. So we have to put them into the space. That's very very important. And foreground elements are one of the best ways to do that. Background area, this is, I think, one of the most important areas of the painting. Even though it's really far away and it's you know, less detail, there's less polish, however, it gives you the sensibility of the rest of the world. You know what I mean? If, if I'm just going to give you a painting of a, of a cool mountain, you know, and there's like a nothing behind it, it it's not going to sell. You know? But if you see some stormy clouds back there, you see you know, birds flying around, you see thunder and lightning, it puts you and, and, and lets you understand what's going on in that space. You know what I mean? It gives you the mood, it gives you the feel. So I like to use the background to really emphasize that. Get some nice separation and overlap. OK, let's do that again back here. Separate some of the shapes out a little bit more clearly and distinctly. Now, one thing that helps out to paint, uh, to paint lighting from bottom up is uh, just, let's turn this upside down. There we go. Now it's like painting normally. Very, very nice. Now we could do this all day long because we see this every day, you know? It becomes much, much easier to do. Let's create some more hot spots down there or up there. One thing that I would suggest as well is when you guys are going to do thumbnails, try to put them into one page like this, and you, now you get to see what you can compare with. Making sure that all the thumbnails have a different sensibility, a different kind of sense of space and tightness, uh, maybe different lighting proportions of light and dark. You know, so now we can definitely play around with all that type of stuff. I definitely want to utilize these shapes to promote where my focal point is over here. You know, all kind of pointing out to that spot. All right. I'm just going to make some, make a couple of textures to kind of use. All right. And anytime I put in objects like this, I always use a mask to try to fit it into the space a bit better. And I always use a mask only because I, it, it it got in, embedded into my process basically by uh, because I was working in in the ad agency kind of space, and everything has to be reversible there. Everything, moving uh, tree branches and leaves and and things like that. Everything has to be accessible and uh, removable, or you know, be able to edit it. So I'm just going to make more of these circular platforms all over the place. Little pods, landing pods, landing stations. And as, as they get further back in space, you know, you can't even see the ellipse anymore really. So just put in some flat lines. We can definitely show a bit more perspective down here on the top surface of the platforms because they're lower. And we get to see more of the top surface. We can still utilize uh, some of that in here and just somehow connect it uh, to the base. Definitely want to get some uniformity down here. So just connecting, connecting the dots right now. And I just kind of want to go for ambient, you know, feel the ambient glow of some of these neon lights coming into the mix. Okay, even though just getting the, get, getting the glow in here as well. I just want to kind of just see where the colors are laying. Now with overlay again, I want to try to play around with the just overall value structure of this piece. And I want to do this small on the page, or I keep the page very small on my computer to see what is actually happening, what is really going on with the values. Sometimes when, it's a, sometimes when it's a bit too big, you just get lost in it. 
and you don't see the, the subtleties of how much is actually changing. 